We're here. Okay, we're ready. I'll get him. Oh, we got to make him announce. I got it. Do you want me to make the announcement? All right, I'm going live. Bye. Everybody? Okay, sorry for all these technical difficulties we've had. Obviously, this is a very popular talk. There's a lot of you here. Um, we are simultaneously casting this in room 2405 upstairs, if you'd like a seat. Um, one thing we cannot have is people sitting in the stairs here. That's a fire code violation, so you will have to remove, uh, you'll have to sit somewhere else or stand in the back. Um, but if you would like a seat, 2405, it's just upstairs. Um, we're just going to be broadcasting this live there, so um, that may be a better option. But like I said, there can't be people on the... Standing there. If uh, Low Texas doesn't have any objections, you can. There are a couple spots along the wall, maybe, but just for about three or four people. So, <laughs> not that many, though. Not the whole subside. Okay. Are there a few more people who'd like to come down front? Like first ten in line. Don't be shy. <laughs> come on, yeah, you! The law and order! Come on! Yeah, come on! Yeah! Here you go! Here you go! Here you go! Here's my business card. I can't get rid of him. Right. Card, yeah, you can! Thank you very much! Come on, more! Come on, you with the hat! Okay, you without the hat. Come on! Free business card. Okay. I thought we gave you I already one. got one. <laughs> you already got one? I'll take it. <laughs> Go back. Thank <laughs> you. Two more seats. Come on, guy holding the jacket over your shoulder like you're debonair. Come on. Oh, and I got food too. Come down here, I'll give you a business card for food. Okay. I'm just giving them away because I haven't been able to do this since I got printed them up two years ago because I just sit in my basement all day. <laughs> okay. All right. Hey. We're just going to use the microphones because it'll be this. I'm serious going to suck and people are going to be pissed up so they can't hear you. Okay, guys, welcome. Um, clearly, this man needs no introduction. Founder of somethingawful.com and, you know, city name sports team. Uh, let's all welcome uh, Rich Lotax Kayanka. Thank you. Um, <laughs> don't look, you're ruining it. How the. <laughs> How do you start it? <laughs> As you can tell, this is the first time I've ever used PowerPoint. And I wrote this entire speech. I finished it up at 3.30 this morning. This is the first time I've uh, spoke since high school, and I had my fly down the entire time. So occasionally, I'll be looking at it. I'm not actually doing something obscene. I'm trying to make sure I'm not doing something obscene. Um, anyways, this speech has something to do with the internet. They asked me to speak here for reasons I still don't know. Um, I've got to hold this microphone and the clicker in one hand and my speech in the other. And I don't have the coordination for that, so please forgive me. Uh, with that away, I'd like to begin this. And the click is not working. Okay, well, this ruins half the fun, but I still have the laser pointer. Okay.
Richard, it seems I have underestimated your ability to fail. For that, I apologize. Not to you, but to the people who would enjoy seeing me tearing your little world apart just that much more. It's a shame, really, that you ignored all of my warnings. Perhaps if you had just a few brain cells left in that... What? <laughs> he even spelled this wrong in that weren't circling the bowl, you would have realized how pointless and counterproductive this whole thing was and quit a long time ago. This little venture of yours has failed in every level. I would guess that you take as much enjoyment... Oh, put it again. <laughs> put it twice. Put it twice. <laughs> this is the worst speech ever. <laughs> I would guess that you take as much enjoyment as anyone might at seeing these ridiculous business models fail like the insane fantasies they were. The pseudo-reality of internet commerce has finally been perceived for what it is, and the only people left are those who are lucky, smarter, both. Now being exposed to so much talk of this, for what, like over a fucking year now, have you ever stopped to consider how you ever came to the conclusion that a parasite like yourself could possibly hope to survive in this environment? The corporate tit is gone, and you are completely incapable of surviving on your own. You think these failed companies had stupid business models? How about yours? <laughs> Do you, all the pictures have really awesome animations that come in. They just fly all over the place. I am so proud of that. That horse... It, it, like, wasn't there. <laughs> Rotated around all over the place. It was great. I knew the advertising market was going to collapse years ago because it's based on the assumption that banners are effective. Think about it. You aren't entirely dependent on advertising. Yet, the people who you try to attract are people who aren't going to click on, let alone buy whatever stupid crap that is being advertised. Did you actually think that it was going to last forever? Everybody knows that it doesn't fucking work, and most sites have to beg their readers to click just to pay the server bill. You're an idiot, Richard, and I seriously mean that. The contentiously stupid decisions you made regarding the various networks you join don't matter at all because the entire idea was flawed from the start. Enjoy your last moments as a free man. You'll soon be shoveling shit for the rest of your life at some nameless corporation, a vacant look forever edged on your face. Years from now, <laughs> when you're no better off than when you started, when it finally hits you that it's all been nothing but a wasted lie, think of me. Think of me, Richard. And when you do, realize that I was the only beacon of logic and truth in this sad menagerie. You seem predestined for failure, however, so I doubt there's anything anyone can do for you. Just remember, when the joy is gone, when you're clawing at the boundaries of your little world, you always had a choice. This was an email that I received two years ago from somebody who was unhappy that I banned him from the forums. <laughs> That's word art up there. See that? It's like 3D. It's like, ah, the words are coming at me, but it, it's not. It's just 2D. It's just up there. Um, as some of you may or may not know, I used to work at GameSpy for about seven months before they fired me. Uh, yeah. Um, anyways, um, it was just, this was during the dot-com, you know, boom and bust days. Uh, it was right when the bubble was about to burst, so everybody was going crazy. That was when they hired about... Uh, 45 people just to do MP3 spy. You remember what a wonderful success that was? I'm sure some of you are using it right now, right? You're podcasting to MP3. Uh, what the hell was it? <laughs> it's just MP3 spy. Sorry, next one. Here's a lot of words. Um, every day we'd come in, my boss...
Every day we'd come in, uh, my boss, Mark Surface, would talk about, you know, we'd have a little meeting, we'd pretend that we're an actual legitimate company. This is back when there was about nine people, and we were growing really, really fast because money was flowing in from God knows where. And he would say, you know, what we got to do, we have to enable the community. He'd say that over and over. We have to enable the community. The big thing here is enabling the community. And every day we say, yes, Mark, we'll enable the community. I don't know what it means. You know, he would just saying it over and over. <laughs> but, you know, really, what does enabling the community mean? I mean, it doesn't make any sense. It's one of those buzzwords that people were just throwing around because they wanted money from VCs, and that's basically what it was. He said over and over, and, you know, I got fired from there, and I still didn't even know what enabling the community it was, and I don't think anybody there does. <laughs> I actually was watching this show last night when I was writing this. <laughs> and right now, we're competing with the ray tracing guy. And I got to tell you, we got more people here than ray tracing, so thank you very much. We kicked his ass. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, ray tracing, go to hell. You know, it's been pretty much. Oh, we're not there yet. What the? He ruined the ferret. I'm sorry. It's been a, um, you know, pretty much a five year road that I've taken to get where I am today, failing out of engineering school and yet speaking at one. Um, and now I am talking about the internet, the same slot as the ray tracing guy and kicking his ass. And so I'm sorry this was a ruin for you. So why am I giving this speech? First of all, Another one. <laughs> you see him spin around? <laughs> How do they do that? Next one. Again. I grew up and uh, moved back to Lee Summit, Missouri, which is just basically a flat, desolate patch of land. Uh, there used to be cows there, now there's strip malls, and it's populated with more fat people than you can see just going to a fat person convention for fat people with a fat person next to you. And Lee Summit is kind of an odd town because they've got the ultimate redneck pizza place called Pappy's Pizza, with an I at the end. And the logo is a naked man wearing a barrel with suspenders and a shotgun with the kind of the muskets that the pioneers used to use. And he's running. But I don't know what he's running from. And the place is so bad that I ate a pizza there, and there's a token inside the cheese. Maybe that was like a free gift for eating it or something. Um, Uh, college, I went to Vanderbilt University. I stayed there for four years, and then they kind of encouraged me to leave forcefully. <laughs> and some things to notice about this picture is his shoes lose definition in one of the frames. <laughs> he's got shoes, and then he's got, like, brown concrete blocks. Same thing with her, too. But that pig, man, he's going at it. <laughs> Um, I went there originally for computer engineering. That didn't work out, so I switched to computer science. That didn't work out, so I switched to general engineering. And if any of you know, general engineering is kind of like the communications degree of engineering. Like, <laughs> But seriously, what are you going to do with a general engineering degree? Uh, oh, yeah, I'm a general engineer. I'm generally engineering this thing right here. I took a few courses on how to make traffic lights, and then I know something about a computer, and that's generally it. <laughs> I just made that joke up. You like that? <laughs> Thanks. 
Um, and the thing about Vanderbilt was, uh, you know, in addition to me being a colossal idiot, I couldn't understand anybody there because 75% of the people are from Texas and 25% are from Malaysia, and all the people in the engineering school are engineers. So with all that together, I had no idea what was going on. You know, the, the only thing that I could do is pick who I thought was the smartest person in class and try to cheat off them. And it didn't work because they had, like, they would give different tests. Do they still do that for every row? I hate that. How are you supposed to cheat? <laughs> they don't think of students sometimes. Um, I spent a majority of my time watching The Price is Right during the college. I, yeah, it was really good. And when I think back to my college memories, that's all that's on TV, like in my brain. Because I would wake up and watch The Price is Right, and before I go to bed, it'd still be on. But I really liked the show, and I liked the one where the mountain climber goes up. That was one of my favorites. Um, <laughs> next one. Again. <laughs> next one. Okay, now we start getting into the whole dot-com wonderful things. Um, like I said, started with GameSpy, then I moved to GameFan, then I moved to Backbeat Media, I think, and then I moved to eFront. You might have heard of eFront before, the infamous chat logs. Um, anyways, uh, the most exciting thing that I'd have to say, besides not getting paid for about a year, which is really great because, you know, not having checks come in when you expect them to come in, you're like, hey, I wonder if a check's going to come in today, and then you're like, huh. <laughs> I didn't get paid. Um, Efront was probably the most weird company I ever worked for because they really encapsulate the whole dot-com bust. Um, it was run by this guy named Sam Jane, and his lead programmer was some 14-year-old hacker who actually did have an AOL account and lived with his parents, and he worked remote. Um, and Efron did wonderful things like, uh, this was back before the PlayStation 2 actually came out. They, on all their network sites, they had PlayStation 2 giveaways, sign up your email address here, sign up your home address, sign up, you know, the size of your penis length, and you might win a PS2, it's going to be great, the PS2 giveaway, we're going to give away all these PS2s. You know who won? The programmer. Then they had this uh, thing, Hawaiian getaway, yeah, um, five nights and six days, or six days and five nights, and it's in Hawaii, next to Hawaii, it's Hawaii, everybody loves Hawaii. You know who won that one? The guy in the advertising department. <laughs> and they just, it was just like everything gone wrong, you know, every, money was coming in, but this was, you know, they were at the end of it. The, the old white people decided not to give them any more money and everything was drying up. And so to kind of top everything off, they had these ICQ logs leaked between the company, the uh, eternal um, talking between, who was it? Sam Jane and some other underling, and they were talking about, oh, well, this person on the network, they didn't get paid. What should we do? And Sam Jane, the CEO of the company, his response was, we'll rape her and spit on her. And he actually said that. And that was kind of the end of the company. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I didn't, this was, they were supposed to be paying me. Uh, they ended up owing me over $40,000. You know, they kept on saying, oh, do it next, or we'll get you next month. We're going through hard times now, next month, next month. And, you know, because, like I said before, I'm a colossal idiot. I believe them. And then they said, well, if you come into our offices and work here, then it'll be easier for you to get a check. And, of course, that didn't work either. So, you know, kind of moved off it. I, I also worked there with a guy named uh, Kevin Fragmaster Bowen, and he got off better than I did because he stole a chair from them. They fired him, and he said, okay, and he took this chair, and he just pushed it out, and he's pushing this chair, and he goes to the elevator, he goes down, he's pushing it down the hallway through the parking garage, and he puts it in his car and leaves. <laughs> um, after that, I worked at a company called Shock Fusion. They were, uh, they were up in um, Seattle and were actually funded by... Uh, some guy who makes really disgusting architecture. I can't remember his name offhand, but he had a lot of money to go around, apparently. And I worked there for a year, and they didn't release a single thing throughout the entire year, nothing. 
And I spent a majority of the time coding a game that I never ended up releasing either. So it was just a year of me doing absolutely nothing. But at that time, I was building up the website, uh, you know, something awful and working on all that stuff. And I guess that leads to where we are today. Oh, yeah, I guess I should have shown this before. That's a nice picture there. Of Excel. <laughs> so what is the Internet? I think this is a very good summary of what it is. Because it just sucks. You know, many people think that the Internet is just, you know, like, a bunch of wires and <laughs> but I mean, you know, you got you got red lines. Oh crap, let me get my laser pointer for this. You got green lines, you got these little blue bubbles with numbers and stuff, and you got all these lines going everywhere. Next one. Do you like that transition too? It went down. <laughs> then here's another one, you know, you've got you've got the place where we live here. And there's orange lines going out of its butt over there. And you got more stuff here. You got little maps down there. That's the internet, too. You can go next. This is the internet, you know. George Bush, Hitler, <laughs> Skull and Bones, Pride and Stupidity, Japan, Bushido, Fat Boy, The Void. You know, this is all kind of stuff here. This is the internet. You got your. This one's a, a little bit easier to understand than the Thailand one. Okay, then next one. But this also is the internet. <laughs> if any of you do tech support for your parents, which I'm assuming a large portion of you, you you're probably more familiar with this one. <laughs> But this, this is the real internet. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna get another one. You know, the, the internet, it's, it's just kind of like a weird sociological experiment because, you know, you've got people who were previously sitting in their basement reading fantasy novels all day and all night and then some. And, you know, they, they've got some weird kind of fetish or they think that, you know, the people who make traffic signals are out to kill them or wind is made by tigers or something like that. <laughs> and they just sit there by themselves because they think they're the only ones who think that, you know, and obviously they can't go out in public and start screaming at the wristwatch because, you know, they get arrested or something. But what the Internet does is it actually gets these people together. You know, before the Internet, these people were just by themselves. Then they get on the Internet, they do a search, and they find people that are exactly like them. And then soon, you know, just one person goes into two. Two becomes four. Four becomes 16, 16. I can't go past 16. I'm sorry. I failed out of college. And so it just keeps on going on and on like that. And once a group kind of hits a certain number, then these people think that they're in the majority. And they start beginning to think that, oh, well, if you think that I'm wrong, you know, I've got all these people here telling me that if you look at the color white, you get cancer. So obviously we're right. And obviously you're a bigot. <laughs> and I get that all the time because you can't poke fun at anybody without being called, you know, racially insensitive, even though, you know, people who think that, you know, hats are trying to kill them, that's not a race. Okay, another one. So here's an example. Say you've got some guy, pre-internet, you know, before any of this. He really likes parrots, okay? I mean, like, more than any of us, he loves parrots. But he doesn't like them in a good way. He likes to take parrots and dip them in caramel and shove them up his ass. 
And, you know, he's kind of by himself. He thinks he's all alone. He's just, you know, sitting around doing his thing. Then he gets the Internet. Then he starts doing searches, and he finds, you know, well, other people like shoving parrots up their ass, too. <laughs> this is great. There are other people like me. And soon, you know, they start talking. They find more people, and then it grows, and it grows larger and larger and larger. And soon they have a website. Soon they have the Parrot Ass, you know, fan club. Soon they have Parrot Ass mailing lists. And it just keep, keeps going on and on like this because, you know, having these little grooves, it kind of validates whatever they're thinking. And it can be, you know, pretty much anything. And that's one of the benefits and drawbacks of the Internet is that no matter what you think, no matter who you are, you can find a group that agrees with whatever you think. Next one. <laughs> you know, this one of the benefits of the Internet, like I said, along with the Parrot Ass Club, is that, you know, when it first came out... Can you move, can you like move that little thingy? When the Internet first got popular with the media, you know, everybody was saying, you know, oh, this Internet is great, you know, you're, it, it's going to break all racial boundaries, all gender boundaries, all that crap. And it hasn't. <laughs> you know, I don't really know what it's done, but it hasn't done that. You know, with the Internet, you're instantly attractive. You know, you can be a 14-year-old female if you really want to. You can go dress up as a night elf and get, you know, free armor. You know, you're instantly smart. If somebody's debating you, you just go to Google and you type in whatever they're saying, you copy and paste from, you know, some libertarian's website. <laughs> you can always find a community, shove parrots up your ass. You know, nobody, if you want to, nobody knows who you really are. You can just go in anywhere. You're pretending to be whoever you want to be. But the best thing is it actually keeps these people off the streets. And, you know, after running the website and seeing how people react when I ban them from a forum... That's a good thing. <laughs> but, you know, luckily they go to IRC and just complain about there for half a decade. <laughs> so I guess IRC is good, too, for a way. Um, it also keeps you updated with all the hot new fetishes that are coming out every day. Uh, I can never even keep up with that. I've got an awful links of the day submission, and every time I read it, I just start crying. <laughs> I also do that when I wake up. Um, I don't know about point number seven. I kind of was distracted when I was writing that. But number eight, you know, the ray tracing guy, I bet he's got like a few lists that end on seven. This list is better. We can go next. So this is the part where I uh, tell you the wonderful timeline of something awful, which I don't remember. But I wrote down some stuff anyways. In 1999, I ran a crappy tripod site called Arc Central. Yes, thank you. Clapping for tripod. <laughs> Pray for ISPs and things. No. Um, and anyways, uh, what it was is just a place for me to put up my crap. And that's what the current site is, too, but I'm too lazy to write these days, so I don't even do that. Um, and back then, I, only, I came up with a couple characters, Jeff K. and um, uh, Leonard Krabs. And that's because even back then, people were threatening to sue me. I would get, like, 16 visitors, two would sue me. <laughs> but they'd just be ridiculous things, like, you can't post that picture of my fat mom. That's copyright infringement. <laughs> and I was just thinking, lady, if you can find a lawyer who would take on a case about somebody putting a picture of your fat mom on a tripod site, <laughs> I'll show up at court naked. <laughs> um, yeah, and then I decided to actually register something awful. 
The name Something Awful came from when I was working at GameSpy. Uh, Ken Radium Stump, Stump would uh, we'd actually say things are something awful. Like we'd go to some horrible site on the internet and, go, and we'd be like, oh, that's really something awful. And I say, I should register that. And he goes, where are you going to put it on? I said, I don't know. And I still don't. Um, and it was in this horrible orange design. I wish I could show it to you guys because it just looked like somebody squeezed out a whole bunch of orange crap and smeared it all over the screen. And it was terrible. If you looked at it, you would go blind. Um, and then, so I thought it was so visually offensive, I just changed all the orange lines to neon blue. And somehow that didn't make things better. Um, in, the year, in the middle of the year 2000, I decided to actually create the forums because people wanted a place to complain about me in public. And, you know, I like making dreams come true and everything. Um, they started filling up really fast. Uh, I'm not sure why, but it developed a really close-knit community of a bunch of people um, who all eventually went insane and now hate me and talk about me, killing me. Um, yeah, and then in 2001, that's when, you know, the dot-com boom came, or bust, I'm sorry. Um, everything was basically falling apart, couldn't run ads. Before that, before I actually started something awful, people were making tons of money, you know. You could get $45 CPM. That's what the guy who was running Unreal Planet or something like that. He would just post up a screenshot, and he made $9,000 a day. Just for posting a screenshot. I mean, it was crazy back then. It was $45 CPM at some times. When I got into it, it was at two, and they never paid me. <laughs> uh, and everything was just basically falling apart there. And as you see in 2001, you know, I started the creation of the paper account thing. That wasn't me trying to make money, because that would be too smart of something for me to do. That was actually me trying to keep people out. Because there's this guy, it was this 15-year-old guy who went by the name Tasty Armageddon. <laughs> and, and what he would do is he would register accounts and post crap, and he'd do it over and over and over. And so we would ban him by his username, he'd come back again. And then so we blocked his username, and then he'd come back with a different username. So then he blocked his email address, and he'd get a new email address. We blocked his IP, he'd come in by a proxy. He was registering 42 accounts a day. And they were hilarious accounts, like Triangle Man, and he would post pictures of triangles. <laughs> because it was Triangle Man, he was posting the, the, the triangles, yeah. Um, and they do things like Magic 8-Ball, and guess what, guess what that account did? Magic 8-Ball pictures! It was hilarious, and he'd keep doing that. And I was thinking, you know, how can I get this guy to stop posting? Because we couldn't keep him the hell out. So I actually, you know, just came up with the idea that, okay, if we charge money to come in, he's not going to pay money to post pictures of triangles. <laughs> and it worked. And so this wasn't any, you know, move by me to actually make money. I never thought it would work. It was just me to keep out a guy posting pictures of triangles. <laughs> and after a while, so somehow they just started selling themselves. You know, people started saying to other people, well, you know, you've got to post in this form. It's not actually full of idiots because, you know, idiots usually don't have credit cards. Because, you know, most of the people on the, well, some idiots have credit cards too, like me. But, you know, um, most of the troublemakers and the trolls out there are just, you know, 13-year-old kids. They don't have access to credit cards, and that's one of the major boundaries that keeps them from crapping all over your community. Uh, and now it's self-sustaining running by itself because that's what self-sustaining means. I really like this one. If you'll notice here, like, blue is kicking ass. We're at nine. And, and uh, purple, this is purple. It shows up as red here, but take my word for it, it's purple. Purple's not doing too good. Beige isn't doing too good. But then on the fourth, red is all the way up there, and blue is just dogging it. He's in third place. And man, you, you gotta wonder what happened. <laughs> hey, you can go to the next one. A minute. 
So, you know, what makes up an Internet community? You've got people out there posting on the Internet. You've got things like computers and people and mice, sailboats, carpet, you know, all kinds of things like that. And so, you know, what's the secret about actually having, you know, an Internet community that doesn't turn into a bunch of idiots telling each other, each other that they suck nonstop? Well, the first point, you have to stumble into it accidentally. That's what I did. But I guess if I, I'll tell you the, this top secret, then it's not as uh, accidental anymore. Um, folks are really attracted to communities, obviously, which appeal to them. So, you know, something awful started with me just writing stuff that appealed to me. You know, if I thought it was funny, then I'd put it up. That's kind of my whole philosophy behind the site. And what that did was bring in people who have the same kind of sense of humor. And that way it makes the community click more because, you know, everybody gets along with each other more or less because it's crap that appeals to them. Um, what else do we have here? Yeah. Um, also, the thing about bringing in members is this will sound, I don't know, kind of stupid, but you have to be kind of selective about what's going on. You know, you can't let in the people who just, you know, talk in numbers because that'll just kill you. You get people who talk about numbers telling each other they all suck sore and things like that, then, you know, you can't communicate with them and they're not bringing anything in. The next thing is don't advertise. Don't ever advertise. You know, if you've got something good, it'll sell itself. But if you advertise, you bring in the people who are affected by advertising. You get people who like clicking for free Xboxes. Like people who like trying to shoot the kangaroo and win a hundred bucks. <laughs> um, you know, run the community because that's what you like to do. If you know all the hard times that I went through, not getting checks and having to pay for everything out of my own pocket, and practically going bankrupt because you know the dot com wasn't paying crap to me. You know that would drive you insane. If you don't actually like what you're doing, then you're going to give it up. Um, and you have to offer something that, you know, no other communities can. If you've got, you know, something and you're trying to charge money for it and somebody else is giving the same thing away for free, they're going to tell you to go to hell. And they're going to say it many times in emails. And they're going to use probably stronger language. And then they're going to say it on IRC. And then they'll probably find your phone number and call you and tell you this. <laughs> okay, next. Okay, so here are the top forums as ranked by bigboards.com, which ranks forums. <laughs> okay, you can go next one. This is the number one forum on the internet, the most popular one, anime role-playing. <laughs> this is really popular, but I don't know why. These, I didn't doctor this in any way, actually. You know, what do we have here? Who hates snobby people? Well, oh, gee, I do. <laughs> Sexy and fat? No. <laughs> I'm going to kill Jesus? And then, you know, it's, it's, it's just a bunch of people who, if you actually click the threads, it gets more horrifying because they've got these anime avatars of themselves They've got, you know, eyes the size of dinner plates, and they're wearing skirts, and they've got magic canes and crap like that. And you buy accessories with virtual money so people can see when you post that you're wearing new socks or something. And this is important to people. I don't know why. But this is the number one form on the Internet. This is the number two one, face the jury. You post pictures of your face, and people say if you're ugly. Because ugly people, I guess, can't tell. And you need other people to tell you. Once again, wonderful threads. Uh, Casper, you fat bitch. No, wait. Does that say bish? She's a fat bish. That's even worse. You got your racial slur here. That's pretty funny. You got me. And so, you know, we've got people talking in segmented, broken English. If they're ugly or not, people want that. 
And then we have IGN. IGN isn't really known for anything except their annoying ads. You go anywhere and you get an interstitial, and then you get an interstitial for the interstitial, like, click here if you want to see more of the next ad. <laughs> and it, it, they just float at you everywhere, and they're constantly you know, figuring out ways to make ads annoy you more and more. Because I guess that's the future. The future is making people want to kill themselves so you buy their product. I don't know how that works, but anyways, I, for some reason, Dreamcast is here. <laughs> it's like, yeah, here, here are all the big boards and then Dreamcast. But, yeah. Well, if you're reading Dreamcast for them, you're paying for something. <laughs> and then, you know, as you can tell, they have an awful lot of messages. Uh, IGN basically gets all their users because they have a crap load of money. They got recently bought by uh, News, what, what the hell was it? Fox News or whatever. So, yeah, News Corporation for like $800 million. Is this worth $800 million? I don't know. And then the next one is the Vault Network, which is also on IGN. The Vault Network has one good thing going for it, and that is that it's full of people who play online role-playing games. And those people are so hardcore dedicated to posting about, you know, where to get the next pair of enchanted boots <laughs> that they'll sit here and they'll post nonstop. They start playing the game, they'll have two windows open. They'll have du dual monitors so they can figure out the best place to get their next set of jeweled underwear. I could never get into online role-playing games because they just bore the hell out of me. Then we have Off Topic. This was, if I remember correctly, it's the spawn of Counter-Strike.net. And it was actually too stupid for Counter-Strike that they had to disown it. It's like the bastard child that nobody talks about and just kind of kicks to the side. Are you going to sit here eating the plate at dinner? Well, you can go sit over in the corner over there and eat the plate all you want. And, you know, we've got great things here, like try to be a cheerleader, hot picks. I think that actually went up to 500,000 pages. <laughs> and then, you know, the eternal question, if you could eat your own weight in cherry-flavored craisins. <laughs> the answer is yes. <laughs> then we have Nexopia. And I don't know what this is. It's something where teen... Does, does anybody know what it is? Nexopia, have you heard of it? It's the sixth most popular form on the internet. It's some kind of teen thing where people write and display how stupid they are. Do girls poop? <laughs> that was actually me asking you. And then there's something awful. <laughs> yeah, so um, I, I did a lot of surveys and extensive research, and I found out what people want. Pink. People like pink. They respond to that. Words, pictures of apes with rockets on their backpacks. We have My Vagina Hurts, but... There's also a lot of other ones that talk about the, the male private parts, too, so don't feel left out. And then in the back is a very huge image, and it's all very fun. You can go to the next one. Here's some fun facts. Okay, obviously, Something Awful is the largest paid forum on the Internet because, as far as I know, there aren't any other paid forums on the Internet, which makes us number one and number last. We get about 50 new members a day, who, uh, not just from them, but 30,000 posts a day going through the forums. I think right now where we've got six servers running just for this. Um, although I got in trouble for bad-mouthing vBulletin before, I'm going to do it again. <laughs> because it's not very good. Something awful runs on VB, and we've had to just overhaul the code because... It's not designed to handle large communities. You can run it on your, you know, your Sailor Moon fan site. Everybody can go in there and talk about you know, how cute they are and how they shot balls of lightning in slow motion at each other, and it'll just be fun. 
but it's not good when you start getting a whole bunch of users. Um, I get nine gigs of email a year, and 68% are spam and 7% are viruses. I think 2% are from my family, and then the rest are people saying that I could have done something else better, or I should stop writing, or I'm, you know, trash, whatever. We send out 150 terabytes of data a year, and uh, when the forums are maxed out, there's at least 5,300 people on. And right now the forum load is way down just because I've got a coder, Radium, that does all this stuff, and it's running amazingly well despite VB being a huge... Um, Product. <laughs> yeah, every, I'm just kind of reading what's already up there, so I don't know what good this is. 21 million unique visitors a year. We serve over 408 million HTML pages a year. Uh, the thing that impressed me the most is that, you know, look at the IE and Firefox thing. They're almost even here. I mean, I know that doesn't kind of jive with the, you know, I think, what are they saying, like 10% of people use Firefox now or something? But I guess it's just the user base that we have. I Me, mean, I'm sure most everybody. Does, does anybody here use IE? You can raise your hand. Okay. I use Firefox, but it crashes all the time on me. Is the Firefox guy here? Why does my Firefox crash? I installed it twice. I even took off the extensions. Okay, here's the rest of the sites. Number eight is hardware.fr. FR stands for France. They talk in a moon language here. <laughs> I clicked on the threads, couldn't read them, gave up. <laughs> then we've got Fock. <laughs> but some of these you can read like sex, sex, sex. It's like, that's the, I would say it's a universal language, but it's English, so I'm not. And then we've got school is out, let's get drunk. Where is it? Right here. See, like, you know, even on Fock, they can't spell school right. I mean, they got everything else right, even the apostrophe. Most, you know, Americans don't even know what apostrophe is. But why the K for school? I mean, you expect more from Fock. And then number 10 is the Volkswagen Vortex forums. The 10th most popular forum on the internet is for Volkswagen cars. And as you can see here, there's uh, 2.3 million posts for the Golf 4 and Jetta 4. There's just people posing like crazy about their Volkswagen. Like they're just sitting there like, yeah, man, <laughs> my Volkswagen is awesome. Finally, a form for me to talk about it. <laughs> They'll never find the bodies. Never. <laughs> this is from the movie Dot Com for Murder. Has anybody seen it? It was really good because it's about a guy who sits on chat rooms, and then uh, when people insult him, he goes crazy, and he... Oh, he wears these magical typing gloves. My wife actually got me a set. They're awesome. They have little lasers on the fingers, so when you type, they shoot lasers at the keys, and they're orange, and then you feel like you know, you're from the future. And it is so good. And Huey Lewis is actually in this movie, and one of the guys from The Who. I can't remember who. That wasn't a joke. I don't remember who it was. Um, but he doesn't murder him, them. So is .com for not murder. Okay, here's where the speech starts getting boring. Okay, so anyways, about maintaining community, you know, most people just think that, you know, I'm, if I ban them or something like that, I'm just a cruel tyrant, I'm Hitler. People call me Hitler all the time because I ban them from a forum. I've never understood that. On the internet, it's like, everybody's Hitler. They, they always say that. It's like, well, yeah, you didn't kill millions of Jews, but you're Hitler. And that's just like the universally accepted insult. You're gay or you're Hitler. You're gay Hitler. You're Hitler if he was gay. 
Um, everything basically just boils down to balance. You know, you have to, you've got new people coming in, you've got veterans who've been there a long time, and you have to make sure that you've got something balanced in between. Because if you get veterans, you know, and you reward them from everything, then they adopt this stance where everybody coming in is a jackass and they don't know anything. And they have this little circle jerk of people saying, oh, well, user, you're the coolest in the world. Oh, no, you're the coolest in the world. Then a new user comes in, they're just like, get out of here. Who are you? We're the veterans. We've been here forever. We're on the Internet. <laughs> uh, the next thing is balance between having a ton of options and subforms and being user-friendly. There's one thing that I've discovered on the Internet is people don't like to read. They get on the internet, but they don't like to read. I don't, I, don't, I don't know what they do, but it's something. They don't like to scroll. They don't like to read. So what you have to do is you have to balance everything out. You have to try to make everything as user-friendly as possible, because if you leave out an option or put it in a place that they're not going to find it, they'll email you to let you know that it's not there. And they'll be pretty mad about it, too. They're like, hey, is that guy sleeping? Oh, I thought you were sleeping. The next one is you have to balance between growing too fast and stagnating. And I kept spelling that like stagnating when I first wrote this. Um, stagnating, I'm going to start calling it that. Stagnating, no, I'm not. Stagnating is basically, you know, death of the forum. If your community stagnates, you're going to get the same people over and over. Nothing's going to come in. You're going to have the same crap flying around and you know, it'll die off. But if you get new users coming in, you know, like a faucet turned on, then it's just going to be a bunch of people saying, lol. And then the next reply will be, lol. <laughs> and then maybe if they're feeling really whack, you'll get, lol, lol, which is like double the lol. I, if they could square lol, I'm, that would be really funny. Uh, obviously, you've got a balance between the rules. You know, heavy moderation, you're Hitler or gay Hitler. And if you're really liberal, then obviously everybody's going to think they can get away with the rules and you're going to have lol, lol, lol. And a community of lols will not live. Um, what is my next one? I wrote this at, like I said before, 3.30 a.m. Um, yeah, and you have to listen to the users, obviously. But the problem with that is everybody has their own idea of how everything should be run, and, and according to them, they're right and you're wrong all the time. I'm being told all the time that everything that I'm doing is wrong and that there's this way to do it. But the thing is that, you know, that's only for, like, one person. They're like, yeah, man, I really want an exercise form, an exercise form about exercising with your motorcycle, <laughs> and I want it to be able so you can upload flash movies of exit signs. Because my girlfriend, she's really hot, she loves it. And I'm like, okay, well, I'll see if everybody else wants that. <laughs> and usually they do. <laughs> um. Avoiding advertising, oh, hit it again. <laughs> Check that out, it's like 3D. He's wearing glasses. And he has a bone around his neck. Man, if you're a dog, you want that bone in your mouth. Why'd you wear it on your neck? Um, anyways, you know, with, if you're running, obviously, a website, you're going to have people who want to advertise on there. Back during the dot-com stuff, the main problem was people would want to advertise on your sites to these networks, but the ads would be completely untargeted. You'd have, you know, things for Viagra, and then they, they would rotate with gambling, and then it rotated with roller skates, and nothing would match anywhere. And I would tell them over and over, you know, the reason nobody's clicking on your ads is because your ads suck. You're not targeting it. You know, okay, we've got the users in this demographic. You know, they're usually around, you know, between 18 and... 30 or something like that. Most of them are very computer literate. Things that appeal to them, DVDs, computer electronics, uh, anime, things like that. <laughs> Not the anime role-playing forms, though. Um, and, you know, I tell them that, but 
they didn't target ads. They just serve up random crap. Hey, new shoes, click here, you know. Click here if you really don't like President Bush, you know, things like that. Wait, Bush wasn't in back then. Clinton. <laughs> Um, but anyways, like right now, they're actually legitimate ad companies. They'll actually write you checks and things like that. The problem is when you get, when you actually start running ads, you know, you start alienating the people who are there. And unfortunately, while that may be a short-term gain, you're losing people in the long term because they start associating your site with a bunch of, you know, pop-up flash ads that are getting more and more intrusive. And advertisers want more and more. You know, they want direct X stuff. They want to make stuff where you have to give your, you know, your blood type. You know, when that, when something flies on the screen, and then a full motion video of a Ford truck comes in, and some guy's like, "Ford truck, America, yeah, buy a truck." I can sing more if you want. Now, I'm sure this has been done to death before, but the Mega Man cover art was just the funniest thing in the world because I remember getting it when it came out. And we played the game, we we're like, this is a match with the cover. He, he, he looks like George Bush kind of there. He's, he's missing his lips, he's holding a gun, and there's golden asses growing out of the ground. And then behind him, there's stuff exploding and like a 70s recreation of what they thought Atlantis would look like. And those palm trees are huge. Like there's a city, but there's these huge palm trees. There's an explosion there, an explosion there, and Mega Man's just sitting here. I don't know. Um, you gotta keep moving. Everything's gotta keep moving. Doesn't matter if you're moving forward, backwards, or sideways. You just gotta have momentum because you know if you stop moving. Stagnate, stagnate, stuff starts to die, people get bored, nobody's coming in, nobody's coming out. Um, you know, and even if you're moving backwards, sometimes, you know, just come in, shake things up, may seem bad at first, you know, like uh, there's one time when people were just posting crap, just on the forums, it would just be crap, there was circle jerks everywhere, people were just, you know, having their own little community stuff, this is probably back in like 2001 or whatever. And uh, I actually left the forums that period because I'm just like, this sucks. You know, I don't want to stay around here anymore. And then Zach, the guy running the forums, came in and did some kind of, <laughs> what he did, he said, uh, if you post between 6 and 6.15, I will ban you. <laughs> and he had it up there for a week. And people still missed it. And they posted between 6 and 6.15 <laughs> and he banned them. <laughs> And I know that's not fair. I mean, people paid 10 bucks to get in, and they lost it because they posted between <laughs> 6 and 6.15. But it worked. I mean, there, things were going backwards and backwards and backwards. You know, you have this kind of goofy thing, and it actually, in the long run, worked. I'm not going to do it again, but it was something kind of interesting. Um, the third point, number C, uh, you, number <laughs> Now you know I haven't spoke since high school. <laughs> I was cutting mashed potatoes, and I nearly cut off my thumb. You probably can't see this, but I was just sitting there cutting the mashed potatoes, and then all of a sudden I noticed the potatoes were bleeding. <laughs> it was one of those really sharp knives, and I started thinking, I'm like, potatoes don't have blood in them. <laughs> and I was pretty sure about that. And then... I started thinking, did, did you see that movie with, uh, who's that, uh, that guy who runs a really boring site, Will Wheaton? Did you see that, did you see the movie where he was in the farm and they were, they were pulling up vegetables and all the vegetables were bleeding? It was like the curse or something. The cursed farm of the bleeding vegetables. <laughs> starring Will Wheaton, nerd from Star Trek. Did anybody see that? I'm not making this up. Somebody saw the vegetable farm movie, please. Raise your hand. Just, yes, thank you. And he's not right, raising his hand just because I pay him and he writes for the site. He actually saw it. Um, and anyways, I 
cut off my thumb making mashed potatoes and it was bleeding everywhere, and so my solution was to sit on the couch and drink beer until I forgot about it. <laughs> but now it's kind of fallen off, and I'm afraid another thumb is going to grow from it. And, and death equals death, too. Click again. That's another shot from Dot Com for Murder. Once again, I'm going to recommend this movie. Huey Lu Roger Daltrey, is that his name from The Who? Dalton? Daltrey? No, Roger Dalton was uh, James Bond, right? Timothy. <laughs> James, James Bond was in this movie. <laughs> Uh, yeah, the next thing is kill drama. You know, you've got people who obviously they're in the minority, but there's some people out there who don't quite fit in everywhere. And then once they find a community where they do fit in, you know, since they don't really have any life outside of the Internet, they kind of want to start drama on the Internet. And that's really the saddest thing in the world. Like, yeah, well, nothing's going on here, so let's stir things up on the Internet. <laughs> <laughs> I heard you're having sex with somebody else on the internet. What do you think about that? <laughs> and they just keep doing that over and over. And then it gets, you know, it's pretty interesting at first seeing two people calling each other faggots. But then after a while, it loses appeal. I'm not sure why. And then, you know, after the initial drama, stagnate, stagnation. Whew. Yeah, the next one, kill trolls, obviously. Keep out the idiots. You know, that's, it's a pretty, go click it again, and a nice picture will come in. Ta-da! <laughs> Gotta have your priorities. I'm about to die, but I'm going to die on the Internet. You know, you've got to keep out the people who just, you know, basically if you're building community, you want the people coming in to reflect, you know, the rest of the members coming in. And the AOL speak... The people who, you know, write in sentences that have more numbers than letters, that's infectious. If people see that they can type like that and get away with it, everybody does that. You know, they say, oh, well, it's okay for this guy, so I'm going to start doing it. That's the same thing with catchphrases, you know. Somebody starts a catchphrase like, hey, I'm going to go sit on your head. And they post that, and somebody else thinks it's funny, then soon, hey, I'm going to go sit on your head. Post, you know, everybody's posting the same thing over and over. And, you know, when you've got people who think the formula for comedy is just repeating the same thing over and over in different ways, then, once again, you're back to stagnation. I like that word. Uh, yeah, and don't kill them in real life, too. That is illegal. Again. Basically, what it all sums down to is if you're trying to create a community on the Internet, you know, you got to do it because you love doing it. You know, you can't do it for money. You can't do it if you want to be some big popular guy on the Internet. I'm not sure why you would want to be that because it's really kind of crappy. But, you know, you just do it because you love it and it's fun. I love running something awful. I love the forums. I love the community. I think it's just, you know, that's – it's – just a great site and it's full of great people and I'm really proud of everything that's become and you know that's the reason why you can't name any like huge corporations out there that have gigantic you know forums because oh man let's go post on the General Motors forums it's gonna be great talk about what I did on the weekend I see an ad for a car maybe a woman standing next to it yeah that'll be fun you know it just all boils down to doing it because that's what you love I'm sure somebody's offended by these pictures. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. Um, the future is something awful. We've got a lot of stuff planned. Uh, obviously, my whole goal when I started the site was to have, like, you know, pretty much a one-stop community. You can go there. You can find everything that you're looking for. You can find a good community. You can find somewhere to find whatever information you're looking for, whatever products and stuff like that. I obviously hasn't really panned out, and some of my ideas are a little bit 
two out of there, like, you know, listening to the community and, say, and listening to them say, oh, we want free MP3s. So I created a forum for that. And it worked well for a while. And then they said, oh, well, we want a forum for uh, bit torrent, bit torrenting, uh, you know, pirated movies. And so I created a forum for that, and that was okay for a while. <laughs> and they were like, oh, I want a forum for porn. <laughs> that was never okay, really. <laughs> but, you know, some of the things you have to scrap, and I'm sure there's uh, at least another site out there that has porn on it. Um, another thing that we're working on is awful video. Uh, the, right now we're distributing uh, Mega64, which are some guys who dress up as video game characters and perform skits in the middle of public when nobody knows what's going on. Uh, we're going to, they're going to be releasing the uh, version 2 of the Mega64 thing. You can go to Mega64.com and see a bunch of stuff. Uh, one of the most famous things is they actually dressed up as the L-shaped Tetris block and ran around in public, and the guy in the costume was trying to fit in to make a full Tetris with things. So people would just be walking around, there's guys in this huge Tetris block, and he sees like a, um, uh, what was it, it was like a mailbox, and just like... <laughs> just keep doing that. Uh, version 2 is going to be coming out. And they've got a whole bunch of skits. We're going to be doing a Katamari Damasi skit where we're actually rolling a huge ball with Velcro and picking up things with it. <laughs> um, what else? We did a Super Mario Brothers 2 skit in Missouri where uh, the guy dressed up as Mario and I had this huge mask. Do you remember uh, when you picked up a key in Super Mario Bros. 2 and that mask would chase you? That scared the hell out of me. <laughs> I could never get out of there. But we would place a key in like a really, you know, an area where everyone was walking. And then Mario would be like, oh, a key. And then all of a sudden the guy with the mask would come running out and we'd run through all the shops with Mario being chased by the big mask. Um, we did Resident Evil where we went through a target as zombies. They kicked us out and called the manager. <laughs> um, and this weekend we're going to be doing... Oh, they did Burger Time too. This is going to be for the version 2 where uh, he was... The main character was dressed up as a chef and he went to a McDonald's and he ordered hamburgers. He's like, no pickles. I hate pickles. No pickles. And then he got the hamburger. He's like, oh, there's pickles on here. He just throws it on the ground and starts stomping on it. And then another guy comes and dresses up as a hot dog costume. He's like, what are you doing? What are you doing? And then they start fighting in the middle of the McDonald's. <laughs> and they just do that in different locations. Um, we're going to be filming a double dragon skit where my wife is going to be wearing a, a magenta leotard, fake boobs, and a giant uh, afro and a whip. And she's going to be whipping people outside of a store and get beaten up. Uh, you know, it's all kind of, it's, it's really funny, though. If you go to mega64.com, they've got free uh, teasers of some of the movies up there. They're doing stuff for Ubis, Ubi, Ubisoft right now, the Splinter Cell things. And as a, another note about that, there is a, have you heard of the game Far Cry Instinct? They were asked to do a promo for that. And, you know, the whole thing is that you're some kind of animal and that you get powers and you can, like, sniff people's blood and then you can track them down. But apparently what they did was a little bit too um, weird. <laughs> because in the skit, he was like, yeah, this is, this is how you do it, okay? And they went into an actual bathroom, like public bathroom, and they had a bunch of blood on the sink. And the guy was like, yeah, you, you just sniff the blood. Oh, this is good blood. Oh, yeah. And then he, 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 like, cut open his, pretended to cut open his vein and start shoving the blood inside of him. <laughs> and then he went to a toilet and drank diarrhea. <laughs> I don't think you can actually do that in the game, so I think that's why they got upset. <laughs> um, other things, awful hosting. We're going to be offering hosting. It's going to be tied with tight integration to the forums. 
um, along with the forms, are going to be completely recoding everything there so it's not on VB and we don't have to stand by their crappy code. Um, Radium is just doing a great job coding up everything and it's going to, thank you. <laughs> he likes Radium. Uh, we're also going to be releasing some books. Uh, Zach is a very um, um, big World War II aficionado. And so he's writing a book about uh, German tanks. <laughs> From World War II. Um, and also, I'm going to be writing a bunch of things called Awful Guides, which are just going to be tiny little guidebooks like Guide to Pregnancy, Guide to Using the Internet, just little goofy books that you can get for like five bucks or something like that. And along with the publishing, we're going to start offering things for the community, like if somebody, you know, it's just the Something Awful forums are full of so creative people that, you know, you've got artists, you've got musicians and everything. We're going to actually just try to give them a chance to distribute their stuff and, you know, if they make cool t-shirt designs, we're going to start independently doing them and selling them things like that for them to actually help them out. Um, geez. And that's pretty much about it. Do I have another? I think that's the end of it. And so that's the end of the Internet. <laughs> okay. And... And you can stick around and ask questions if you want to. Does anybody have any questions about the internet? Yes, sir. Have you ever thought about giving up on the forums? I know with the whole Ryan Lord business, uh, have you ever just thought about saying screw it and? No. <laughs> well, okay, because you have to. Yeah, you think you got me on that one, but you didn't. <laughs> they boil faster if you cut them into fours, because then instead of paying the whole potatoes are putting there and taking an hour boiling, if you cut them into quarters, then they boil and cook in about 15 minutes. Can you write a guide about cutting up mashed potatoes? What? Can you write a guide about it? <laughs> Not a good one. Just repeat the question as well. Okay. Beating up on trolls? On, 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 are you asking what actions do we take on people who make fun of trolls? <laughs> Me too. <laughs> Probation. That's, I mean, you know, we've got the probation system for stuff that, you know, people get, getting banned obviously is harsh. That's the thing that, you know, we want to balance and make it fair. If people put an actual money investment in, you know, we don't want to just be quick to take that away and say, oh, yeah, get the hell out of here. We got your 10 bucks, you know, because that's just a really jerk thing to do. So what we have is a probation system. So if, you know, like there's some minor infraction of the rule, the person, you know, just made a mistake, just like, oh, you can't post for an hour or something like that, you know, it just proves the point that, okay, in the future, don't beat up on people or something. Yes? There's tons of troll posts, yeah. Like going into a thread, say, okay, say like the thread is, uh, I'm a Christian, ask me threads about Christianity, and then somebody posts, Jesus sucks. <laughs> That'd be a good troll. Because he's a faggot. <laughs> See, it's internet talk. <laughs> and th that's actually another interesting thing. The word faggot, it doesn't even have any relation to, like, homosexuality anymore. It's like it's been used so much that it's just a generic insult on the internet. I mean, people just use it, they say, oh, you're a faggot, but it doesn't mean that you're gay or anything. I don't even think it has a 
gender term on the internet. Obviously, in real life, if you say it, it has some kind of connotation to it, but on the internet, it's just been used so much over and over that it means nothing. It's just generic. I don't know why I was talking about that, but <laughs> yes, the uh, large woman with a hat. I didn't even create that. That was Zach's thing, and it was supposed to be like, um, I don't know. I think I'm too dumb to understand it. But I think it was either supposed to be a joke or an anti-joke or an anti-anti-joke. But either way, I didn't read it and understand it, and I just kind of stayed away from it. Oh, yeah, talking about the corporations not being able to. I'm, I'm kind of, I was asked to repeat the question again, but he asked if, you know, corporations not being able to form communities and things like that, if they're ever going to try to do that. What corporations try to do is basically what the, you know, news, the Rupert Murdoch's news thing does. They just buy them. You know, IGN, you get, a, you get an offer for $800 million, and, you know, all your sites are just talking about, you know, elf boots. Then, yeah, you're going to take that. <laughs> And so that's the easiest thing for them to do is just, you know, buy it from somebody else and hope that, you know, they've got a webmaster that, you know, really cares about the stuff. Because th these corporations, you know, if they want to sit down and say, yeah, I want to build a website that's going to attract a lot of people and, you know, get a lot of attention, people are going to like posting here. They can have all their, you know, engineers build something. They can have all the marketing guys figure out what people want. They can have the graphic designers do that. But if they don't have actually somebody who cares and actually gives a shit about the people there, then... Nobody's going to go there. And so, you know, that's the thing. You actually have to, you know, have a heart and actually care about what you're doing to keep it going. Oh, yeah, the PayPal situation. Um, basically, PayPal, okay, uh, here's the back story. Um, with the Hurricane Katrina deal, uh, Radium, our main coder, he lived down there. His parents lived down there. They lived down there for like tens and tens of years. They had a grocery store chain completely wiped out. Their house completely wiped out and everything. Uh, our servers are down there. So everything was down for five days. And when everything came back up, we tried to raise some money. And the only way that we could do it was through PayPal. Because what I wanted to do was send out free merchandise to everybody who donated, you know, just to say, you know, thanks for actually helping people out. And within something like um, 12 hours, we raised over $30,000 for that. And I was saying, yeah, this is going to go to the Red Cross. But PayPal decided to freeze the account because obviously getting $30,000 in 12 hours seems suspicious to them. I don't blame them for that. But what they did was, you know, they just froze it and they didn't contact me. They didn't say anything that was going on. And so I had to go through and find their number. I was like, okay, yeah, what's going on? They're like, okay, well, you know, we've got all this money from you and we don't know if it's legit and we need this information from you. And then one of the, one of the things I had to fill out was this, um, this form saying, we need proof that merchandise was shipped. And I said, well, uh, you know, the, we just got the donations in. I haven't shipped out anything yet. And then it didn't even give you a box to fill it in. It would just say cancel. And so even if I shipped out the thing that I wasn't shipping, I couldn't ship it and tell PayPal that the thing that I didn't have was shipped. <laughs> and so I called them up, and I got a very cheery person who basically told me to go to hell. Um, and then eventually we got things straightened out. I'm just like, you know, listen, we're just trying to do a fundraiser. If you think that I'm trying to scam people, that's fine. You know, I, I, I can understand that there's a lot of creeps on the Internet who would do something like that. You can directly take the money. You can freeze me out of the account, and you can donate it to the Red Cross yourself. You know, I, I won't touch a single thing. And they said, well, we're only friends with the United Way, so we'd have, to don uh, we'd have to give the money to the United Way. And at the time, I was just thinking, okay, fine, you know, a charity is a charity. And then I posted about it, and then I got all these emails from people saying, don't go with the United Way. Look at this. Here's 18%, and then this is 9%. So 9% is better, and United Way is 18%. And I didn't know what the numbers meant, but 18 and 9, there's a big difference there. <laughs> so, 
so, you know, since these people gave me, you know, since they donated their money, I felt that it'd be kind of unfair to all of a sudden go to a different uh, donor uh, sponsorship or whatever. So I just said, okay, refund everybody's money. They did that. So nobody got anything. It was a great donation drive. Oh, um, my avatar in the forums is a pig. I, I guess this was an important question. <laughs> there is no deal with it. There is just uh, one day I just said, oh, yeah, I'm going to ban the next person who posts that stupid pig image. I had no idea what I was talking about. I think it was like 2 a.m. There is no pig image. I just posted that. <laughs> and then somebody posted a picture of a pig, and I pretended to get really mad and put the person on probation. And they use it as my avatar. And then ever since then, it's been pig, pig, pig. You know, it's like one of those things where, like, if somebody gives you a collectible plate for your birthday or something, and then you, you know, put it up on the shelf or whatever, and everybody thinks, oh, well, you know, you really like collectible plates. And then you keep getting them over and over. And then soon your house is full of collectible plates. That's the way I am with pigs. I hate those bastards. <laughs> and this conference is killing the raters. They've probably they've gone home. They're crying already, because they know it was a failure. How did I get Dave Kelly to work? He is the flash tub guy who makes all the cartoons. Um, basically, I said, "Do you want to work?" And he said, "Yes." I mean, there's. <laughs> I, I wish I could make up a story behind it, but that was really about it. He's just, um, if you go to the site, look at the flash tub, look at some of the earlier flash tubs, because those are the ones I did, the Magnificent, <laughs> I was about to say Magnificent Voices for, and then I screwed up saying that, so obviously there's a uh, error here. Um, but he just loves animation, and he just loves drawing, and that's all he wants to do, and that's why I can pay him really little, and he does a lot of work. This isn't going to be a mashed potato question again, is it? Okay. Uh, he was asking about how the users come in. Um, usually, everything spikes when college starts. And it goes down in the summer. And it goes down around Christmas. And then it goes back up again after Christmas. It's just kind of, you know, like, just think about when are people so bored that they have to use the Internet? <laughs> College. <laughs> that and the price is right. Yeah, he was ac asking about uh, the paying situation, what I do with the employees. I pay all the people who write on the front page. There's some, sometimes I make them go through trials of like, you know, two months to make sure that they won't all of a sudden start writing about how they want to stick Crayolas in their eyes and blood, 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 blood. Because, <laughs> you know, that's, you have to worry about that on the internet. Um, but everybody who does stuff for the front page, I pay. Uh, the moderators, since there's currently 50 of them, obviously I can't pay people to moderate. And the people who you know you want to moderate are people who want to do it without getting paid anyways because it shows that their heart's in the right position. Um, but Zach was the first person I started paying because he's been with me the longest, and he's been writing you know, ever since... I think 2001 or so, and then after that, livestock, and uh, I can't even remember now. I used to pay frags, but now he doesn't write anything. Oh, he was asking what happened to Ben Greeson Platt. He used to write movie reviews. He disappeared. What happened was I paid him a check, and then he disappeared. 
It was the great mystery of the check that makes people disappear. Oh, the clown balloon. That was uh, when somebody gets banned, they get to see his picture of this big balloon, and there's a clown's face on it. It's, it's very festive. I think I don't know where it came from. I think I just did a random Google image search, and I said, oh, well, that's a really happy balloon. People should look at that when they're banned. <laughs> well, these people like balloons and clowns on balloons. But see, most of these stories are just really boring. I don't go anywhere with them. So keep asking questions. <laughs> Yes. Uh, the hosting company has been awesome. There, uh, did you ever, oh, geez, what was the name of it? They, ooh, fancy ringtone. <laughs> Are you going to take that? <laughs> um when this actually when the hurricane was going on the people were in the co-location center and they're actually holed up inside there with rations making sure you know the diesel generators were running and putting gas into them and everything uh the guy had a uh, blog i can't remember what it was it was like the interlocutor or something like that internictor internector inner inner netter something <laughs> Um, but, yeah, they kept it up as long as they could. The problem was that, you know, all the OC3s were going down because everybody was afraid or couldn't get into the city to actually do it. Um, the actual building itself wasn't hit because it was, in this, it was in the building that Enron built before Enron took the big dive. Um, they were on the 13th floor, and the entire time there's always a staff of, like, five people, and one of them was, like, ex-military who served in Iraq. And so he was talking about how he'd do rounds, looking for, you know, military term terminology of some sort and all this kind of crap. But he sounded really smart about it, and that was enough for me. <laughs> and right now the serves are still down there, and they're doing a great job of it. It's, uh, uh, I can't even think of the hose now. What does it say in the upper right? Zippa, Zippa, Zippa. That's it, Zippa. So if you want to be hosted by people who will stay by the servers fueling a diesel generator while there's a hurricane and people are shooting each other outside, <laughs> zip up. <laughs> no, they weren't really strapped to the car. They were, they were safe in the center next to a giant diesel guzzling beast. I don't know, but it better not be in the pink form. <laughs> uh, he was asking about since, you know, the one-time fee. That was actually something that I was worried about for. You know, people were saying, yeah, do micropayments, micropayments. That's the way of the future. Remember when everybody was going on about that crap? Nobody does micropayments now. It, it just, like, failed out. It's just another stupid RSS fee to the blogosphere or whatever. <laughs> but I can't, I, I don't know, I just can't see myself doing a monthly fee, and I don't think I'll ever do something like that. And the way the community is is... You know, it, like I said before, it's just an awesome community, and the people there realize that, yeah, you know, we've got server bills that right now it's $2,200 a month just for bandwidth, and if we actually move out of there, then the, jump, the, the uh, cheapest price, because we move 100 megabit, we peak at 100 megabit, usually move around between 50 and 60, I think, burst to about 95. Um, the cheapest that we can get is about, you know, between fifty and sixty dollars per megabit moving to Kansas City. So, you know, obviously 
50 to 60 times 100 is a lot more there. And that's not even including rack space and all the electrical crap and all that stuff. But I don't know where I was going with that. Um, I don't think that'll be a problem. And if it is a problem, I'm sure the people uh, will figure out some way to deal with it. But the way the community is right now, people, you know, understand that this is something that, you know, you have one-time fee. People buy, you know, custom tiles. People buy each other custom tiles. It's just a really giving community. So it's always sustaining itself, like I said before. He was asking what uh, the motivation for creating the FYD forum, which stands for fuck you and die. <laughs> um, originally, that forum was made to keep all the people flaming each other and trolling each other out of all the other forums. Like, you know, it was, you know, the grown-ups sit at this table, then everybody else <laughs> goes over there. That was the original purpose. But over the years, it's actually, and, and uh, back when we first created it, people actually did that. And it was the saddest thing in the world because these people would be trying to outflame each other on the Internet, and they'd just be like, well, you know, you suck ass. And you'd be like, well, you know what? You suck double the ass and balls. <laughs> and their guy would be like, oh. You know what? Your mom's dick is small. <laughs> and it just go on and on like that, except they were serious. And they were actually thinking that, you know, if they do this kind of thing, that the other person would just be like, oh, man, you have bested me on the Internet. I am retiring. I am done with this. I can't keep up with you guys. But now it's got its own sense. You know, I post in there all the time because it's just this weird kind of, you know, non sequitur kind of humor that just... I don't even know how to describe it. And if you haven't been there, don't go there. <laughs> because, I don't know. It's, 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 it's really funny, but just in a way that if you don't understand the humor, then you'll get told to get out. And even if you do, you'll get told to get out, too. It's like a club treehouse full of people who hate you. We're releasing the crowd now, so if you want to leave, you can leave. But if you want to stay and ask questions, you can do that, too. <laughs> but it was a pleasure speaking to you all. And if you leave, I have nothing against you. Thanks a lot. That was great. Oh, sure. My hands are cold. <laughs> No. The model, the original model that was on the show for 30 years, had a husband who worked for the government that was lost in the mountains and declared dead. And when they introduced that game, she ran off the stage in hysterics, and they've never modified it. Wow. Well, I did not know that, and I thank you. You'll remember that. I will now, yes. Thanks for coming here. Sure. What's that? I wouldn't get that close to him. He's kind of weird. <laughs>